God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's just be frank. You are born to die. As well as you were born, it will be as well as you will die. The wages of sin is death. Your clock is ticking to death. Well, Miss, you don't know when that alarm clock will go off for death. It may be this morning, it may be this afternoon, but death is coming to you. The wages of sin is death. God said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. That Jesus died according to the scriptures. Was buried and arose again according to the scriptures. Jesus came because you're going to die. Jesus died on that cross because we are sinners. Jesus is God because He's no longer in the grave. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So when you die... The Bible proclaims that there is an afterlife. And we stand here before your death to preach the salvation of God by Jesus Christ that you need to be born again. Jesus said ye must be born again. And upon death, your eyeballs will be refocused when you die upon the Lord Jesus Christ to be absent from the body and present with the Lord, or your eyeballs will be in torment in a place called hell. Many people have and will die and wake up in hell because they have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Your religion cannot buy salvation. You being good cannot get you into heaven because the Bible says there is none good. No, not one. And don't think because you're American that God bless America is going to get you into heaven because America will not be in heaven. Salvation is of an individual self that is you. It's not that you're American. It's not that you're a Baptist. It's not that you're good. And the question is, as far as salvation is, have you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved? The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. If any means for you to think that you're going to heaven is outside the blood of Jesus Christ, you will not go to heaven. There is salvation in no other. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. That name is the Lord Jesus Christ. We're here before you die to tell you what to do before you die. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved because once you take that death step, you cannot come back. For Christians who are saved, you take that death step, you're going to wish you had done more. You're going to wish you had the opportunity for more crowns. You're going to wish you had opportunity to please the Lord. And for some
some of you Christians there now that say, oh, what's he doing? Jesus would never do that. Jesus approves of what we're preaching right now and what we're doing. Read your own Bible. And for those who are not saved, those that are not Christians by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, once you wake up in a place called hell, you cannot come out. There is no pushing a button and restarting the game called life. That's it. If you are in the sound of my voice for preaching the gospel, you can never tell God I never knew because I told you how to be saved. I told you how to get out of hell. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That is the answer to the question of immortality. When you die, you will be immortal. You can be immortal with God, the Creator, and your Savior, or you can be immortal burning in a place called hell because you rejected God's gift. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hell is coming to those who have rejected Jesus Christ as their Savior. Salvation is wrought only by Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ alone is salvation sought. The Bible says, The Bible says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice, and show my people their transgressions. You know what the problem with us is? You know what the problem with all of us? We have sinned against God. And I'm not talking about lying, stealing, adultery. I'm talking about even myself. We have not given Jesus Christ all the credit and all the honor and all the glory that's due to Him. And I'm saved and born again and washed in the blood of Jesus. And I don't give Him all honor I should. I know all you have never trusted in Jesus Christ has never given Him any honor, except for when you drop that wrench on the ground or you bang your fingers and you use Jesus Christ as a cuss. Some of you, that's the only praise you give Jesus Christ, but that will not get you into heaven. That will damn you even more. That's the second or third commandment. Listen, rolling God's name in vain is one of the top ten sins. The top ten sin of all top ten sins, number one sin that you may go to hell is rejecting Jesus Christ in the gospel. You see, we're all sinners. Our checking account is minus. We have insufficient funds to pay our sin debt. How much does a lie cost? How much does adultery cost? How much does murder cost? And listen, everybody right here, you're all murderers, you're all adulterers according to the Bible, you just have to think it. You didn't realize that your thoughts and your words will be judged one day. We're all sinners, and you need to do something with sins in order to get to heaven, and bingo won't do it. Running for Alzheimer's will not pay for your sins. Cleaning the beach will not cleanse you of your sin. Giving money to charities will not save your soul. Being a good person cannot do it. Only by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. The only way to God the Father, the only way into heaven is by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because that's what I'm preaching right here. 
out of his old black book that says Jesus is the only way. That says that Jesus saves. You may drive a soul from Kia, but what you going to do about your own soul? You can buy a Kia soul with money or from the bank, but what about your soul? God doesn't take check, cash or money orders. He takes the precious blood of Jesus Christ without spot. Behold, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. What can wash your sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Death is coming. You will die. And your family will look at you in that coffin and wonder, what are they doing? They may even put on your tombstone, rest in peace. You ain't resting if you're burning in hell. There are markers in the cemetery that are lying, rest in peace, and yet if you're in hell, you ain't resting, according to the Gospel of Luke. Jesus said that there's a straight gate. He's the way. Many will go the broad way. Not all of you will get saved. Don't look for masses to follow the Bible. Masses follow religion. And I don't expect all you to be saved. But God expects for me to preach to you the gospel that you may know. And when you're angry with my voice, you're angry with my words, you're angry with God according to the scriptures. God is good. Amen. I can assure you one thing. With this presidential election coming up. I can assure you two things with this presidential election coming up. You're going to be taxed and you're going to die. That's it. You may not even make it to election day. You may drop dead with that vote in your hand never to be cast. And thinking as you go off into hell, I wish I listened to that preacher more than I wanted that person to be in the White House. The Lord Jesus Christ may come today. He may come tomorrow. And then you'll be damned if you have not believed on Him. Because when the Lord comes for His church, all those that are saved will be raptured up. Then you will have a period called Jacob's Trouble. I'm not going to get into it, but listen, that will be hell on earth before you end up in hell below the earth. And then end up in the lake of fire because you have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. We stand here with one purpose, that you may know that God loves you enough that He died for you, that He paid your sin debt, that all you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. Man makes it a religion. Man makes it cash, check, or money order. Man makes it difficult. God says, believe on my son to be saved. Isaiah 1.18, God says, come, let us get together. Let us meet together. In Isaiah 1.18, God is offering you an invitation to come to him about his son. God is not asking you to come as a Baptist meeting. God is not coming to have you come to Him for a telephone. God ain't having you come walk for some cause. God wants you to meet together with the Lord Jesus Christ that you may be saved and have eternal life. See, there's eternal life and there's eternal damnation. 
Life is sought by Jesus Christ. Damnation is believe whatever you want to do, and you don't even have to believe. What must you do to go to hell? Reject Jesus Christ as your Savior. Well, preacher man, how do I go to heaven? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Minus Mary, minus doctrine, minus church, minus money, minus anything but Jesus Christ and you can get to heaven. Listen, salvation is so simple, a child brought up with scriptures at six years old can be saved. And you're an adult and you're not saved, foolish on you. I mean, who really wants to burn? Who wants to take the chance? Come on now, listen. If there were soldiers here with with flamethrowers, and I gave you a warning that these soldiers with the flamethrowers are going to come in there and burn everything up over there, you just sit there and still buy your water bottle. Oh, it ain't going to happen. As they get closer and closer with the flames to burn you, you would not try to get out. You would not try to run. You would not try to call the police and the fire department to say there's a bunch of maniacs here burning us. We're, we're hurting. You would try to run from those flames, but we preach the flames of hell for you to get away with, and you go about your business as normal. We are warning you that if you reject Jesus Christ, you will burn. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. The best that you can do, Jesus died on the cross for it. And the best that you can do is a sin because Jesus has already done it for you. So if you think you can do it, you think you're better than Jesus. Really? Even the Roman government declared Jesus sinless four times. I bet you a judge couldn't say that about your life. Somewhere along your life, we can go in there and get you as a sinner. Some of you, the banks put a chain on the pen because of you. If you steal a pen, you are a thief. If you call your boss to say, I'm sick, but go to the beach, you are a liar. And that entitles you for to be a sinner, and Christ died for sinners, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Now, you will not go to hell because you're a liar. You will go to hell because your sins are not under the blood of Jesus Christ. God is a holy God. God says, be ye holy, for I am holy. You can't stand before God calling out sick when you're not sick. Shall I bring this in American terms? You can't stand before God when you tell your wife, the person, I don't want to tell them, tell them I'm busy. Tell them I'm not home. Well, they already heard you tell your wife that, so they know you're a liar. And if you are in any form of American business, you are lying to do that business because you can't make no money today without lying. You know what lying can get you if it's not under the blood of Jesus Christ? It'll get you into hell. Have you read John 8, 44 about your father, Satan? Let me read to you about Satan from John 8, 44. I'm going to quote the scriptures. Just so you don't think I'm lying. I'm going to do something that is odd and weird. I'm going to open the Bible and read it to you. And I'm going to read to you John 8, 44. 
Which, by the way, is the Word of Jesus Christ, who is God. What I'm going to read to you is a testimony by Jesus Christ. He says, and I quote, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. Hi, boss, I'm sick, I'm not coming in. Woo-hoo, we're at the ball game. You are representing your father, Satan. And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes on to the Father, God, except by Jesus Christ alone. So don't bring your religion. God won't take it. Don't bring your cash. God has no register. Don't bring your good works, because there is none good. No, not one. We're all unrighteous. The Bible says we're all filthy rags. Look that one up in the Hebrew. Look up that filthy rag in the Hebrew. It'll get you quite astonished what that word means. And how that word is used. As for a filthy rag. We preach the way of heaven through Jesus Christ, the Bible, not an occult, but the Bible, God, Jesus. We're quoting from Him. Here's the Bible that you can open up. I can show you the place in the Scripture that you can read where I am reading from. These are not man's words. These are God's words. God says ye must be born again. God says, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's it. I didn't mention no church. I didn't mention no works, but believe it. Faith and belief. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. My heart has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and my mouth is proclaiming. That's all I'm doing. I am being a Jesus witness to you. I'm not a Jehovah witness, because Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. So I'll be a Jesus witness. And I will tell you what Jesus said out of Scripture, not a magazine. And out of the scripture, Jesus said, you must be born again. You'll never hear a Jehovah Witness say that. Notice I have nothing here to sell you. Everything we got is free. Want a Bible? If I got a Bible to call, I'll give it to you free. Notice I don't have the bright, smiling teeth as a TV preacher. I cannot heal you. But I can show you how to be healed by being washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life because I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. People are gathering up for a benefit for others and Jesus gathered himself up for the benefit of you, sinner. You nailed Jesus to that cross. Who killed Jesus? Your sins, Isaiah 53. Hey, How you doing? Okay. You are a murderer for putting Jesus on that cross and killing him. How's that for? And what's the number one people, the number one thing that people say to me when I witness to them? Well, I never killed anybody. You killed Jesus because of your sins. He had to die on that cross because of your sins. If you were not a sinner, He would not need it to die. He would have remained in glory, but because you have a debt that you cannot pay, Jesus went to the cross. Jesus arose again from the dead according to the Scriptures. If you are well aged here, I think that's a good proper tone. If you are well aged, you have...
have sinned. If you say I have not sinned, let me talk to your spouse. Here's my spouse. Talk to her. She'll tell you I'm a sinner. Hey, if you're well aged and, you, and you got children, let me talk to your children. There's my daughter. She'll tell you I'm a sinner. I'm not ashamed to show my sin because it's under the blood of Jesus Christ. And any sins that are not under the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm going to have to give an account of. For God so loved the world. There's that love you want. Right? For God so loved. Oh. Gushy word, love. You don't preach love. You don't preach love, preacher. God so loved. Oh, you make me feel so great. You make me feel so happy. Oh, he preached about love on Saturday. Oh, but that love is past tense. For God so loved. John 3.16. Rah, rah, ball game. John 3.16. That love is past tense. That love is not today unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on Him shall have everlasting life. If you don't love Jesus, God does not love you. He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son shall see the wrath of God abiding upon Him. And the wrath of God is not love, because love is Calvary. There is no love of God outside Jesus Christ. There is no love outside a sacrifice. Come on, men. You know. Oh, baby, I just love you. You know you don't mean it. You know you just want one thing. Yet God's love sacrifice, He gave, John 3.60. He loved, He gave. And I get the benefits, eternal life. Not perishing. Shall we dig into closets this afternoon, men? Shall I open up that door and reveal those secrets? Huh? Okay, I'll keep the door shut. But God will open that door one day. God will reveal all your sins unless you put them under the blood of Jesus Christ. God will show the entire world what you've done. I don't know about you, but I don't want God to do that to me. And guess what? God won't do that to me because my sins are under the blood. They're forgotten. They're never going to come out. The only thing my sins do today is make me just feel guilty, but they're under the blood. I will not feel guilt. What can wash away your sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Baptism cannot wash away your sins. Baptism gets you wet. And then a funny thing about baptism, wait a minute. I get baptized to be saved, and then I come out of the baptism, I put a towel to wash, to wipe away what washed away my sins. That sounds stupid. What washed away my sins, I took a towel and dried it off. But if I'm washing the blood of Jesus Christ, nothing can wash it away, nothing can wipe it away. The blood of Jesus is eternal. Water, I can wipe it away. I can have church attendance. I can be kicked out of a church which I have been kicked out of churches. I'm glad that's not my soul and my salvation. Money. I'm glad money's not salvation because I ain't got none. I'm too busy paying my utility bills. See, God said money can't save you because He knows you ain't got none. Isn't that great? And those that do have the money don't spend it on for salvation. They spell it on damnation. So, there goes money. A 
about how good I am? Really? What about a competition you're going to be involved in? Let's say you're competing for something. And you're just going to gladly let everybody go and win before you. Really? You mean, if good works will get me by, you get me the tickets to that NASCAR race where they're all going to go on how great they are and let everybody else win. i like to see that race. There'll be no accidents in that race. Matter of fact, they wouldn't even start the race. Oh, you go. No, you go. Oh, I want you to win. No, I want you to win. Go. No, that's not, cause that can't buy you into sitting in heaven either. But if there's one purpose, one way that God has declared for all humans has been met through Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. How's that? Find the fault in that. That God will honor. See, when you're burned in the lake of fire, and there's no time, and I am rejoicing at the feet of Jesus, explain to me what is wrong with Jesus' salvation over yours. By the way, folks, you know what happens when you're in hell? I'll tell you what Jesus said. And I, I can't explain this completely, so let me just put it in your terms. In hell, you will rejoice at my preaching that your family's listening. That's in the Bible. That rich man in hell said, will you send somebody to be a witness to my family that they don't come here? You know what your family members are saying in hell? Don't come. Listen to that preacher. Hell is a place that they don't want to have a family religion. Hell is a place where they don't want to have a family reunion. That's according to Jesus of a testimony that a man that's in hell, he don't want you to come. So Jesus has told us to go in all the world and preach the gospel. A man in hell has told you, go tell my family. If your dead relatives want us to tell you about the gospel, I better think you listen to them. Everybody in the graveyard today are Bible honoring, Christ knowing, and for many of them, it can't do nothing. When you become a Bible believer in hell, there's nothing you can do after that. You just burn with the knowledge that Jesus saved and Jesus didn't save you. And with the knowledge is that you could have been saved. That on a Saturday morning you came for vegetables and you heard Jesus. Do you realize you coming for vegetables and hearing Jesus, this will change your eternity forever. In heaven, if you believe on Jesus Christ, you'll rejoice and be glad with the angels. If you reject Jesus Christ as your Savior, you'll be in hell damned in the fact that you did not listen to that preacher. If you think I'm loud, you'll be louder than that woman screaming in torment. I don't believe there'll be loud voices in heaven, but I ain't there yet. But, I was going to say I have the honor, but, um, I've heard a woman scream from a burning car, let's say that. It's not quiet. It's not quiet at all to be in agony. Everybody goes to the dentist, they want Novocaine, they don't want agony. And yet, but you will choose to reject Jesus Christ and burn in hell for all ever. Why? Why take a Novocaine needle from a dentist?
Baptist, but you won't take the gospel from God. Why will you risk your eternity of torment and damnation because you don't want to believe on Jesus Christ? 6,000 years of testimony, 6,000 years of the Word of God, 6,000 years of true Christians living and dying for the Word of God is testimony enough. How about 400 people in excess have witnessed the resurrected Savior, have witnessed the dying Jesus? You could bring them into a courtroom and a judge would have to honor that testimony and sure. How many of you would just like to stand right out here in the sun all day long without a hat, no water? I'm going to be very lenient what I'm going to say right now, but how would you like to stand out in the sun right now purely naked with nothing? And yet you'll burn in hell for all eternity because you don't want to believe on Jesus. And there's no relief. The rich man in hell wanted mercy and he will never get it. Mercy is now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now is the time to obtain mercy. Now is the time to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Not after you die. You can't do nothing after you're dead. Don't worry about the whale. Save your soul by Jesus Christ. I don't know why God just had me say that, but I just upset somebody. I love the ministry of God. Because it's all about Jesus. Notice I don't have a toll-free number down here. Whatever you need, whatever I can supply for you, I will get it for you for free. Because salvation is free. It's not about me. I don't even want you to know my name. I want you to know the name of Jesus Christ. Some preachers want to advertise their name. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In the split of a second of an eye, you may now enter eternity. There's nothing you can do. It may be a year, it may be 10 years, it may be 20 years. But you've got to choose now your eternity before you die. See, you can't say, well, I'm going to go live 10 years in hell. If I don't like it, I'll come to Jesus and go to heaven. That don't work. When you enter the gates of hell, that turnstile locks. And you can't get out. And when you get to heaven by Jesus Christ, you go in heaven, you're not even going to think about coming out. How about if I just put a simple question? Let's state for the fact that, okay, eternity. Would you really like to just burn for all eternity? Just plain and simple. Huh? Do you want an eternity where you're going to be tormented and tortured for the rest of your life? Misery, no pills, no alcohol. Living in torment, pain and suffering. Come on. Is that what you really want? If I told you tomorrow that there will be no more medical help at all. Tomorrow, the President of the United States is going to require health care in the full, an illegal activity, and all health care will be suspended. No more doctors. For some of you, that would give you a great big fight. Because some of you are in a lot of pain. With 
with no relief. And I understand that. I understand that some of you are in complete agony. Do you really want to go off of eternity feeling worse than what you do today? You got a miserable marriage. You want to have a, a you want to have a miserable marriage in hell? That man will never do right. That man is wicked. Uh, you go to hell and live with him for all eternity. Death will never do your part because you both ever die and you're both tormenting each other in the flame. The Bible says in hell you have a tongue, you have an eye, and you remember. And if he's tormenting you here on earth, he'll torment you in hell. Do me a favor, get saved, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and leave him in hell and go to glory. I got saved by that preacher, preacher, but I don't want to be in hell with my husband. That'll work. As long as you put your faith in Jesus Christ that he saved you for he'll save you from your sins. He is God's redeemer, you'll be saved. I got saved for the one principal fact. I didn't want to go to hell. With an open Bible, the guy asked, he said, do you want to go to hell, Sally? I said, nope. And he showed me through the Bible how I may not go to hell. And I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and I got saved. How's that? Listen, if it takes avoiding your husband in hell to be saved, step up. I'll show you the Bible. Aggravate him through more through life by telling hey, I'm a Christian now, I'm going to church. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But the one thing is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That's it. Say, so come up to me and say, preach, I just don't want to go to hell. Amen, we're on the road, let's go. That's what it takes. You don't want to go to hell. And I can take the scriptures and show you what God says, how you don't have to go to hell. It's a simple step. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's it. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life because I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm saved. Well, let me assure you of one fact. When you die, prepare to meet thy God, the Bible says. I don't believe in God. Prepare to meet thy God. Mary's my God. Prepare to meet thy God. Allah, prepare to meet thy God. Allah is not God. Allah is a figment of someone's pizza night and having a bad dream religion. Who wanted to have sex with young girls. That's that religion. And by the way, Islam wants blood, Jesus shed his blood. Jesus will not take down any towers. But he died for those people on 9-11. And many of those people on September 11 woke up in hell because they did not believe on Jesus Christ. Some went into glory. That ambulance is going to someone's house right now. That person may be going off to eternity. There they go. You can walk across the street and get hit by a car and go off for eternity. And listen. Listen. Because I heard that preacher will not get you to heaven. I had to face that preacher every weekend will not get you to heaven. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ will get you to heaven. Believing the Jesus of the Bible that we preach will get you to heaven. For God so loved.
loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. You know what these people do with these vegetables and fruits that perish? They'll throw it out. You know what God will do with you when you perish? He'll throw you out.